In this tutorial, I will demonstrate 3D characteristics that ArcGIS Pro offers. The previous video has discussed of what each of the module covers and showcases a resource file. Currently, we are on the second module. Now, many of us GIS specialists are aware of performing 3D in ArcMap and may ask, what's the difference in Pro? Well, ArcMap requires you to have 3D Analyst license. You, you need to have ArcGlobe and ArcScene to build multi-layered 3D environments, symbolize them, and position them in 3D space, and have it at all rendered. ArcGIS Pro has all of these functionalities in one. It is more friendly when handling LiDAR classification, has BIM and KML interoperability support, and can connect to City Engine for urban simulations and virtual reality content. Additionally, 3D in ArcGIS Pro has geometric effects and advanced cartographic options such as adding more realistic environmental effects. For instance, if we go into this post under real and type in realistic visualization, you can see what it showcases the realistic environmental effects in Pro. You can add ambient occlusion, eye dome lighting, and water fill symbols with animation. Okay, with that said, let's do some 3D demoing. Now there are three ways to extrude data or display 3D visualizations. One way is if you already have 3D such as multi-patches, you can simply add the data to the map and convert it to global or local scene. For other types of data such as points, lines, and polygons, it requires a few more steps and some creativity. In this demo, we will extrude air quality index. From this site, air quality index was collected in point form at an hourly basis during work hours. And you can see we've collected eight stations across the GTA area. To extrude points and add the height dimension to it, first we gotta convert the map to local scene. Go to the view and then select convert and convert it to local scene. Next, I'll go to the Map tab, go to Preset, and add thematic shapes. I will select the subset of data of the Air Quality Index, and hit OK. With that, it will bring you to the thematic shapes, and gives you a list of the kinds of shapes you'd like to select. In this case, I will pick Standing Cylinder. The color, I will select the Air Quality Index, as that's what we'd like to display selecting an appropriate color ramp and then the height I will select air quality index if we had other atmospheric data such as nitrous oxide or air temperature the visualization would look completely different then I will set the scale to 60 fold and that is it that is how you extrude point data and height in it and you can see how it looks across the GTA area, with the most pollution ha occurring in the Etobicoke and in downtown Toronto area. Now there is another way to extrude data, and this is more applicable for polygons. The data is the same as before, except I will display all interpolated data on an hourly basis, which is aggregated in one feature class. Getting the points interpolated and formatted to the appropriate data structure will be discussed in the next video on geoprocessing as a demo. The idea is to show 3D interpolation of air quality index across the GTA with a time-lapse animation. First, I will add the data. And you can see in 2D, there are a lot of contours which display the aggregate interpolations from the different time periods. Next go to the appearance tab, hit type and I will select and select the base height and then hit the extrusion expression button, pick the value max which is the interpolated values of the air quality index and multiply it around 50 And this is the way to extrude polygon data. Now it looks messy here, and it does take time for it to render it, 
but you can see you can kind of see the different heights of the interpolated values over time. And it kind of looks like rolling hills here. But we're not done though. We will slice the data per hour, do symbology, and then perform a time lapse animation. Right click on the feature class, select properties, hit time, and layer time. I will select a single time field, as that what we, that's what we have. And then in the time field, hit record, which is the, the name of the field. And notice in ArcGIS Pro, it is able to detect the appropriate time formatting. Click OK. And then ArcGIS Pro has enabled the time ribbon tab. So go to that, and you'll see it would already show the animation bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and set it at an hourly basis and for the specific date. In our case, I will select August 12th and set it at 6 a.m., which you can manually type that here for more pre for precision. And we're not doing days, so I will swap it to hours. And then step interval for the animation, I will put it as one hour, as that, that's what, what we have in the data. Then what we're going to do is go to the symbology and change it to the appropriate color scheme. So we can see not only the, the 3D visualization, but we also can see the, the, varia the, the variation across the GTA area of air quality index. Now you can see the variation and also the 3D visualization across the GTA. With Etobicoke having the most air quality pollution at this time at 6 a.m. and North York being the least. And you can kind of see that uh, from the th at a different angle. Lastly, I will play the animation button. And as you can see, it is animating it at an hourly basis and is changing it. Okay, that concludes our tutorial on the basics of 3D visualization. The next video covers part one of improved processing and automation. Lastly, check out Esri Canada's Higher Education Resource Finder. There you will find additional content including ArcGIS Pro.